Well, hello again, everybody. Pastor Joel here with you one more time on the Past Days with Pastor Joel channel. First, I just want to thank you. I've been getting so many encouraging comments and uh, and great feedback, really. And um, I didn't know when I started this channel if, if this would help anybody or not. I was hoping that it would. And I'm just so thankful that it is. And one of the things I'm wanting to do beyond just teaching some of these concepts is to help you communicate them better with other people. And so that's at the heart of this video as well. And we're going to look at some passages that talk about the last days. That's really the heartbeat of this channel is, is placing those last days. What were the last days and when were the last days? And I want to just um, give a couple of shout outs here in this video as well. If you have not yet read Samuel Dawson's Eschatological Essays, I highly, highly recommend it. That's Samuel Dawson's Eschatological Essays. And uh, as I was reading through that, I reached out to Mr. Dawson, and he was kind enough to have an email exchange with me. And one of the things I asked him was, what do you think is the best way to present this? Because I'm always trying to figure that out myself. I'm I'm still learning, and it's one thing to to learn what the Bible really says about the last days, it's a whole other thing to present it, especially because for many the, the paradigm is, is so dramatic and radical from what they've been taught. And, and Samuel really felt like if we could get a good handle on, on a, when the last days took place and what sorts of things were supposed to happen in the last days, that might go a long way to helping other people. So shout out again to Samuel Dawson, Eschatological Essays. It's a big book. It's about 500 pages, collection of essays. Another person I want to make a shout out to has become a good friend of mine, Charles Meek. Some of you will certainly know that name. Uh, if you don't yet, you should. Charles Meek. And Charles has a website called prophecyquestions.com. 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 I was told once in a leadership class, if you say something three times, people will remember it. But Charles has all kinds of fantastic articles on eschatology and a lot of other things as well. And so I'm borrowing a bit from his article here just because he put these these verses, had, had some of them already written out and so on, and it's just a little easier to, to follow along. I've just got a couple notes here on my phone. But you really need to check out that website. Again, it's prophecyquestions.com by my good friend Charles Meek. Um, the last days the end times, there are really only a handful of possibilities. Um, one, and this is what I believed for a long time, maybe what some of you were taught and believed, and, and certainly as you talk about some of these things to other people, they might have the same view, um, that, the, that we're in the end times now, we're in the last days now, or we're very close to that. And, and a lot of those people, and I don't, I don't mean this at all in a pejorative sense, because again, this was me, but they don't even realize that the Bible teaches that the last days started in the time of Jesus and the apostles in the first century. Like they've, they've never heard that. And for some people, even to even to have you say, well, they started then is like is like too much of a mental shift and it's difficult. And so that would be one view is that they, you know, they didn't even start at that point and they're off in our future or we're in them right now. Another view, which is held by um, a lot of people that would consider themselves amill or post mill in their eschatology, often reformed churches are, are somewhere in that space. And they would recognize that, yes, the last days or end times did indeed begin at that time, but we're in them now. So essentially the last days is the period of time between Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' second appearing or coming. His parousia is the Greek word there. And so I just want to look at some texts from the uh, New Testament. There's certainly plenty of places we could go in the Old too, but let's just look at, at some of these texts. If you've got a Bible, you might want to uh, follow along or... I'll go through them rather quickly so you could at least write down these passages. Uh, so 1 Corinthians 7, 29 through 31. 1 Corinthians 7, 29 through 31 talks about the appointed time has grown very short for the present form of the world is passing away. The present form of the world is passing away. We also would see similar language in uh, 1 John 2, 17. Um, Paul also talks about in Romans 13, the, the night is almost past, the day uh, is coming, and so on. Now let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. This is a powerful verse. And to give some context here, Paul has been talking about many of the failings of the Israelites. And he, he says to his, to his audience there that they were 
for you, for you to basically learn from their mistakes and not to do that. He says, now these things happen to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. So Paul was saying there to his audience that the end of the ages has come. Let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. This is, uh, these verses are near and dear to me because it's really what started my eschatological journey years ago. It says this, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. And then later in Hebrews 9 and 26, we find this, He, referring to Jesus, has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. Okay, powerful. 1 Peter 1.20 he, again referring to Jesus, was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake. Here is now one of the, the most clear and even shocking, jarring, I think, verses that we find along these lines. 1 Peter 4, 7, the end of all things is at hand. And then we have uh, 1 John 2 and 18, it is the last hour. That verse goes on to say that Antichrist and Antichrists have already come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. Um, and let me just give you some other references here that you can look up on your own, and I'll just give some brief context on them. Uh, Matthew 13, 38 through 42. Matthew 13, 38 through 42. That's one of Jesus' well-known parables on the, the harvest, which you know I thought was talking about the end of the world. That's talking about the end of the age. Uh, Matthew 24, 2 and 3. That's when Jesus' disciples come to him. Um, he He's just um, you know, talked very uh, not nicely to the Pharisees and religious leaders, telling them that all the blood um, all the, of the prophets all the way back to Abel will be on their heads. And, and then they, they go out, and he's on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples approach him and say, you know, Teacher, when will these things be? That's uh, Matthew 24, verses 2 and 3. When will your coming be in the sign at the end of the age? And so on. Uh, you've got Acts 2, 14 through 20. That's Peter's sermon where he's quoting the prophet Hello, moi, not really me, but quoting the prophet uh, Joel, and Peter is saying that what Joel had spoken of as to take place in the last days was happening right then. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 8 and 15 24 also put uh, the context of the last days in that time frame. A couple more here 1 Peter 4 1, 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5, Hebrews 3 14. James 5, um, you, can, you can see, even in earlier in James, it's interesting, you can see this reference to the last days, but a couple verses in chapter 5, I think it's um, 8 and 9, either 7, 8, 8 and 9, where, where James talks about that the judge is standing at the door, and he tells those people to be patient, because Jesus is coming soon. Um, Jude, some of the last verses there, where, where Jude is kind of being, you know, reminding them, remember that, that they said in the last days these things would happen. Um, and so what's, what's interesting here, and I want to say this um, gently and pastorally, and I, I mean that sincerely, I have encountered some people who, who will not acknowledge, who absolutely refuse to acknowledge that the last days or the end times even started in the time of Jesus and the apostles. Now, if you're having a conversation with someone like that, uh, good luck. I, if someone is going to see this, you know, the passages that I just, just read, and, and others, I didn't read all of them, but alluded to them, and won't even recognize that they started at that time, that's a person that just is not willing to submit to Scripture. Because you, you, that is plain as day. Whether or not they're going on now, however long they will go on, it is undeniable, unequivocally clear. I think I said that right. That the last days and times began in the first century. I, I just don't know how you can't even see that. So then the question becomes, well, are they still going on now? Well, here's the interesting thing. All those passages I read, every single one of them, maybe some a little more directly, some a little less directly, place the last days or end times in that particular time frame. None of them talk about the last days or the end, end times being way out in the future. Not, not a one. Same thing, by the way, when we look 
at uh, various verses talking about Christ's second appearing or his parousia. Sometimes people that push back against preterism correctly point out, they say, well, not every single one of those references to the parousia has a time statement on it. That's correct. But here's the thing. Every single reference to Christ's parousia that does have a time statement attached to it is always a first century appearing. I, you know, I've heard people say before, oh, for your preterists, all you have is the all you have is the timing. All you have is the time statements. And, and to me, that's kind of like saying, uh, you say you're married, all you've got is your wedding ring. You say you're a musician, all you've got is your guitar. I mean, come on. I mean, it's like we have everything that we need in the time statements. That's that's the whole that's the whole deal. And now there are other ways to talk about and line these things up theologically as well. And so going back again to these time statements, or, the, or, or references rather to the end times or last days, they are always and only referring to that first century in the New Testament. Um, interestingly, when you go back to the Old Testament, and I'll just mention a couple things here, I was watching a, a debate just over the past couple days, and the person that was you know, against preterism brought up Isaiah 2, and I just went, went through it. Well, Isaiah is talking about the last, last days, and obviously that's about the end of the world. Well, if you go to the first verse of Isaiah 2, it, it, it restricts that judgment to Judah and Jerusalem. And there are all kinds of other texts like that we can find in the Old Testament. So the point is that you know, Old or New Testament, and I worked mostly with the New in this video, every single time the last days or end times are referred to, when there is some sort of time surrounding it, it's always placed in that same time frame. The Old Testament prophets looking forward to the time of Jesus and the apostles. And then you know, the, the apostles talking about those things happening right in front of their faces. In fact, uh, Galatians 4.4 4 just came to mind where it talks about Jesus being born of a woman, being born under the law. Um, so the time is fulfilled or being born just at the right time. What was that time frame? It was the last days. Now, I would agree uh, with people that you know, I mentioned earlier, a lot of people that are more Reformed, you know, Amil, Postmill in their eschatology. I think they correctly believe that the last days are end times start essentially with the with the resurrection of Jesus or somewhere right in that time frame and end at Christ's second appearing. I agree with that. The problem for them, however, is that scripture makes it abundantly clear that Christ's second appearing was to take place synonymously with the fall of the temple, the end of the age, the Jewish age, etc. And so I, I hope that some of these texts have helped you. I, I really do think that Samuel Dawson was correct, is that if we can begin helping people see when the last days or end times were, and they can start seeing those the first century. Now, initially they might think, okay, they started there, but they're still going on now. But the more you read the texts, and the more you just think about that, it is untenable. Here's what I mean. The, the whole time frame for the age, you know, the, the Jews thought of this age and the age to come, the two ages, or this age and the age of Messiah. This age was the Mosaic Age, where they were under the law and all those restrictions and so on, and that lasted somewhere around 1,500 years. There seems to be some good agreement on that. So if that's the case, just, just think about it. If, if this age, or the, the first age, lasted about 1,500 years, but the end of that age lasted so far over 2,000 years, I mean, that is bizarre. What kind of an end is that? You know, I'm a musician, right? So I, I like listening to songs, and a lot of you probably do too. That The end of the song is not longer than the song itself. You know, I've got a good friend who's an artist, and when he, when he gets, you know, he's almost finished at the end of his painting, it doesn't take him longer to paint the end of the painting than it did to paint the whole rest of the thing. So just, just philosophically, this makes absolutely no sense that an end would end up being longer than that which it replaced. It just simply doesn't work because the end times last days were indeed between the time of, around the resurrection of Jesus and his parousia, but those things happened approximately 30 AD to 70 AD. That was the period of the last times, the end days, sometimes referred as the eschaton. And we be, when we begin seeing that, I mean, everything changes. It can be jarring. It certainly has been for me. It can be dramatic. You know, it can make your brain feel very alive. Um, and, uh, you know, mess with us a little bit. But again, we've got to look at the scriptures and say, what do they really teach? And I know since I've accepted that the last days was that time period between about 30 AD and 70 AD, um, so much of the Bible um, becomes accessible, comes to life in ways that it just cannot otherwise. So, again, 
encourage you uh, to look at these scriptures I read. Go to Charles Meek uh, website, prophecyquestions.com. You'll see so many incredible other articles. They're short, they're easy to read, and you also might consider picking up Samuel Dawson's Eschatological Essays, where he does a very thorough treatment of this last day's period. And so that's it for this video. Pastor Joel saying bye for now.